But as an as an observer, you are one of the founding members for NDBB. And how can a founding member be denied a ticket to contest? <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's how politics work. And I do not know the dynamics within the party. Uh, exactly. That yeah. is it. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the question, you see, PGP and NDBP partner 4020, whether it is, they're the same party. Mm-hmm. Now accusing me of trying to join the BJP party when I have never applied, no, I have not even applied to join. Okay. The okay. question of me joining the BJP party, and I, nev- I never discussed about joining the party. Mm. I had to inquire about what is happening. Mm. Whether it's going to be 60-60 or 40-20 and what is this kind of things. So that kind of uh, uh, inquiry thing, that is a different thing. But then when I'm a founding member of a bar party, to be, have been treated like that was actually quite a bit of an, uh, I mean, mm-hmm. had to be a bit of an insult and therefore mm-hmm. uh, I had to resign. Mm. Hello viewers, welcome to this episode and we have Sir Alem Timshi Jamir today. He, he, is a retired chief secretary of Nagaland and he cracked UPSC. He entered into UPSC service in, two, in 1977. Right. And I think he has served the government of Nagaland for more than 37 years as far as I know. Yeah. So it's a very, very wonderful opportunity and it's a pleasure to have this discussion with him on many issues um, that's happening in Nagaland. And we can talk about his political journey as an ex-bureaucrat and he has contested in the election in the past. So we can go into this detail one at a time. So, sir, thank you so much for accepting my request to join for this conversation. Thank you for being, bringing me on board. <laughs> yes, many, many of my viewers have been requesting to have a conversation like this with you. So I'm really excited and happy that it's happening today. Okay, mm. thank you. Yeah. So can you tell me about, um, as soon as you joined the let's say, the civil service, and how young you were, and what was your dreams, and what, what were you thinking then? Well, we joined the service at quite a young age, as you know, 77, that, yes. was, that made us hardly 22 years. Right. And uh, as usual, when we're that young, we have lots of dreams, hopes, expectations. Mm-hmm. And actually, I had a little advantage because uh, we have had my father as a bureaucrat before me. Mm. He retired as chief secretary in Nagaland. And uh, in a way, I have seen the growth of government service and the bureaucracy and the things that uh, the bureaucrats can do, could do. And uh, it was with a lot of you know, hope and aspirations that uh, I joined the service to mm. do something for the people in the state. Wonderful, wonderful. And I think as I read your bio, you have done a lot of work for Nagalin, like as a chief secretary or as in the capacity of a civil servant. And what, out of all the initiatives or activities that you have done for development, what are some of the basic or primary things that when you look back, you will be very proud of, of what you have done? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of things uh, you have done with a lot of dreams. Yeah. And those dreams were to set with the hope that we will set into motion something which will, will, uh, will, 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 will help the Nagaland and Naga people to develop. And unfortunately, uh, many of the initiatives that I have taken have not really been carried forward by the you know the political leadership or the others and it it's little uh, sad to say mm. but uh, i would think uh, the, uh, the the movement in the agriculture sector has been a, my, my basic uh, aim and from agriculture sector uh, it was my vision that say maybe about 10 15 years in agriculture sector would grow into uh, uh, a commercial scale productivity mm. based on which we can have manufacturing and the services would come up. And that way I was hoping and looking forward to the development of a Naga mm. uh, economy for the country, uh, for the people. Mm-hmm. But uh, there has been lots of understanding and misunderstanding among the leaders now. So. Okay, okay. 
Okay. So as a, as a bureaucrat, you understand very well about the problems of Nagaland, which the one thing is, like you say, economy is one issue. We don't have, we don't generate any revenue, mm -hmm. plus youth unemployment. Um, as a bureaucrat or as an ex -bureau, top bureaucrat of Nagaland, were you concerned about the youth unemployment, which stands at, I think, 92,000 registered and educated unemployed youth mm -hmm. so far? Yeah, I mean, this has been some of the basic concerns. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, youth unemployment and registers and all were, you know, viewed at, during our days as a very important, you know, aspect of, you know, looking at the economy of the state. Mm. But unfortunately, we could not find a resolution to the problem for a couple of reasons. Mm -hmm. First, the educational system of the country. Okay. The purely a white collar education system, you pass BACA and all that kind of things, you end up nowhere. Mm. And uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, this the concern for uh, employment oriented training or education system came about only recently in okay. about seven eight years Achha. and then we have tried to plan out but then i and then the other side of the the, the living outside education the economic preparedness of the state mm -hmm. we have no industry set up yeah we have uh, the agriculture the people are still uh, thinking agriculture is just laborers in the farm Whereas agriculture, as I saw it, was, you know, a lot of activities post-harvest. You have this uh, storage for go-downs, transportation, mm -hmm. processing. All these are also ag agro-based uh, industrial activities, which actually has not picked up. Okay. And uh, the reason why this has not picked up, is I realized that it is because there is no commercial-scale production. Mm -hmm. Only when there's a commercial-scale production, then all the post-harvest activities of storage, transportation, processing, and all these things would... Uh, come about. Mm -hmm. So the basic thing for um, looking for employment either in the agriculture sector mm. would be again the commercial scale productivity or in the industrial sector that I have some other views. Okay. Some other views on the industrial sector. I mean, uh, would you like me to talk about the industrial sector? Yeah, please, sector? please. Yeah. You see, we are imagining for ourselves a situ situation which actually we 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 we, we have no chance or no choice for industrialization because no industry gets started with money from our own pocket. It has to come from some investors, some banking, some okay. finances, some money in flowing in which can set into motion an industry. Mm -hmm. Now, that kind of an industrial uh, development cannot take place in Nagaland. Because we have got article, we claim article 371A, we won't allow transfer of land. Mm. So who, which industrialist would ever, you know, be stupid enough to come and uh, invest in Nagaland? Mm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Mm. Whereas the Naga people are also, we don't have enough money for industries. Yeah. And so industrialization will, t will take some time to take off. Okay. So, the, I mean, basic thing I keep on thinking is about agriculture and redefining agriculture mm -hmm. as not just production as mm -hmm. laborers in the KTs but the post harvesting and there's a lot of scope provided we have a pointed direction for development in that mm -hmm. direction okay that's interesting <coughs> if I perceive it correctly you have your primary focus on agriculture as the environment where youth can generate employment for themselves mm -hmm. through investment or through by themselves and of course, Nagaland has the capacity to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank God, like we have, you know, a uh, very fertile soil wherever mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. But you were also once the CEO of the IDAN, mm -hmm. Investment Development Authority of, authority of Nagaland. Yeah. So as an investment authority of Nagaland, like was there enough investment or it was just the department for the sake of existence or was there transaction of investment happening when you were the CEO or even now, even now, is it really happening? No, as That's I've said, mm. we don't have the climate or the atmosphere for investment in Nagaland. Okay. But we have to keep trying for the investment things because only based on that we can we say that Nagaland is growing. Okay. So that's why we set up the Investment Development Authority, right. knowing fully well that there's no investment coming in, mm. but we wanted to create the, the necessary atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So one of the 
easiest not uh, easiest way was uh, CSR, the corporate social yes, responsibility, yes. with uh, 24,000 crores lying around. Yeah. If I could bring them at least one person, say it, about 2,400 crores into Nagaland to activate some of the uh, activities over here, mm. that would have been deemed as an investment. Okay. But apart from that, we were thinking in terms of creating an atmosphere for investment. So one thing, first of all, we um, went into creating uh, this uh, entrepreneurship development, mm. woman entrepreneurship. We had a GIZ, German yeah, Development yeah. Bank program, her and now we created one. Mm. Then the other side, we were in dialogue and then we had the opportunity to send our boys and girls for this uh, training in the Indian Institute of Foreign Trade. Mm -hmm. Because this uh, foreign trade is one of the most prominent aspects where we can grow. Okay apart from the situation in Myanmar but uh, you know we have a lot of potentials of growth in this sector mm -hmm. and then likewise you know the, all the investment all the entrepreneurship training uh, we wanted to build up so that we could you know create an atmosphere by which people can start uh, you know looking at becoming their own entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and only with the local entrepreneurs build up can we expect some investment right Otherwise, there, there, there was no, there, there, no, re, no, no scope for investment, actually. Okay. okay. Right, right. So, so the, main challenges of, the main challenges of investment in Nagaland are non-existence of local entrepreneurs, yeah. as much as we want it to be. Mm -hmm. And when the, like you said, when there, is, there are no local entrepreneurs, who will come and invest? There's, like, they can't just directly bring their organizations or entity. They have to come and invest in the local industry. Mm -hmm. So this is like the who comes first, the chicken and the eggs, yeah. you know, like, mm -hmm. so this, I want to understand from you, how do we start in this situation? Mm -hmm. Okay, let us have a little analysis of the, yes. the, 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 the adverse conditions. Okay. Okay, we have no local entrepreneurs. Right. One. Mm -hmm. I've spoken about land, lack of transfer of land. Nobody will come unless he owns a little land. You cannot expect anybody to come in with the land, mm -hmm. uh, with the investment. Mm -hmm. The third aspect, we don't have any uh, labor. You see, when a fellow wants to start, a, invest 100 crores, it's mm. a big money, even mm. 10 crores. Invest, he would like to look for some, you know, uh, labor availability in the area. So those things we don't have mm -hmm. in Nagaland. We have to build them up. Mm. Then the third aspect is banking. The Sarfasi Act has been passed and all that kind of things, but it has not taken really taken off because of the, the, the people's uh, perception about the land laws. So these are the four factors okay. which is uh, stopping the, uh, the, the, the investment from coming in. Okay. So these are the four areas where we have to act to, uh, you know, to, 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 to help uh, the, the, the create the atmosphere by you know, easing up the situations. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were trying in the Aidan to, you know, okay, okay. affect those places. Okay. So you have pointed out some of the major issues where investments are not um, facilitated mm -hmm. properly. So, but those are very structural problems we cannot solve in one day. For mm -hmm. example, Article 371A land issue. Every, let's say, the majority of the population of Nagaland will oppose to that. All civil societies might oppose to that if we try to bring amendment to that act or to that article. So in order to woo the entrepreneur, I mean the investors. So then from here on, we know that these are all structural problems and we can't build entrepreneurs overnight. It has to come nat you know, naturally with the passage of time. So now in this condition, what do you suggest the government of Nagaland as an action point? First, uh, the perception of, uh, okay. I'd like to differ a little bit on the okay. perception of the people mm. that we can't uh, transfer land, Article 371. Yes, Article 371 it says no act, the basic thing is no act of parliament. Mm. Can, it's applicable to Nagaland mm. in matters of its social custom and all kind of things. Mm -hmm. So it is actually not the act which prevents our people from making our own laws, our own, uh, you know, our own uh, way of living okay. to protect ourselves, okay. including transfer of land. Now, supposing I want to give my land to or sell my land to somebody, 
what is stopping me? Hmm. Actually, when you see the Article 371, there's, there, 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 nobody is stopping you from, uh, you know, giving the land to Ambani or Adani and to, to start, a, uh, the, the, to start a, uh, it is our own self-created, hmm. more or less imaginary, you know, out of the fear of the people of being hmm. overwhelmed by outsiders and all, which is preventing us. Otherwise, there's no legal impediments to transfer of land. Mm-hmm. There's no impediment. Mm. Anybody, I mean, you can. Uh, he's free to sell his own land. Mm-hmm. But there could be problem because tribal lands are not allowed to be sold to the outsiders. Who says? There's an. I, as far as I understand, I think there is an act that talks about outsiders cannot go and purchase tribal land. There's the actually that's what I have given. There's the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation (ILP). Okay. ILP. Okay. That prevents people mm. from. Having business, having land, or everything is in the tribal areas. Okay. That is only law. Only law. Mm-hmm. A little outdated law, but they give that that is supposed to protect. Otherwise, Article Three Seventy One A only safeguards our customary and traditional, you know, the the usage and all the kind of things. Okay. There's that it doesn't say anything about transfer of land. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then that means I mean there is possibility. There is possibility. Okay. And apart from the possibility, we also have to design our own. Uh, st- if people keep on saying that there's a, there's a, that we can't transfer, then we can design our state. Mm. For example, I had mooted when I was chief secretary to have a, a expressway, four lane, eight lane expressway, right from Tijit, going down okay. along the foothills and coming out of. Dimapur and coming down to Kelma, mm. and from Tijit join, joining up with Konsa in Harunachal, and from Kelma connecting with uh, Silchar. Now, this expressway, apart from the movement of the people, on either side of the expressway, at this three, four kilometers, we could uh, define an area where you know anybody could come, make it free for people to come and invest, mm. outsiders to come and invest. Mm. And uh, it will not change the the, 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 the the definition of the state's boundary. Political okay. and administrative boundary will remain. Okay. But then it will in, in involve people to freely come and invest and then those kind of things within the corridor, which I uh, said, uh, let's call it NSDZ, Special Development Zone. Okay, yeah, SDZ, yeah, right. You know that thing. So it, it's similar to the model of Taiwan. Okay. Taiwan... They have kept the uh, the mountains and the hills for the original settlers. They're like Naga people over there, the tribals. And around it, they have made the, the zone around the thing, which is applicable for anybody to come and invest anything anywhere. Mm-hmm. Similarly, that would have been a very good concept because ecologically, the mountains, the villages, the cultural thing could have been protected. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the foothills, it could have been opened up for you know, industrialization. Okay. But then the NGOs and these people th- thought <laughs> they knew better than then. Okay. It could not be implemented. Mm, mm, Mr. Rio, he went a little bit quickly, too quickly, in fact, Okay. Uh, bringing a resolution in the assembly because he was going to go as MP. Mm. But the resolution could have waited until the idea had sunk into the, to the, to the people. Mm-hmm. He accepted the idea, but he made a resolution in the assembly before he went and included that outsiders be allowed land, and that made all, all okay. the uh, people, you know, react. And then the, the idea remains. There are business people who are accepting the concept, but the, our ho hos and engineers <laughs> they're still objecting to it. Mm. But if we are able to present them a concrete trajectory, a roadmap. Mm-hmm. And make them clear of like I mean have, there should be a communication between the ho-hos and the policy makers like you it must be due to a communication gap yeah. right yeah I mean putting the wrong thing forward no that okay. land will be transferred to outsiders that should not have been the case okay the case should have been we should have made a still now the mm-hmm. thing, let's make an expressway mm-hmm. on either side of the expressway let's have industrialism let's concentrate power supply let's concentrate water supply, mm. let's concentrate dwelling, and everybody else will come down to the valley to uh, 
and would, won't disturb the ecology environment of the hills and mm. mountains, keep it safe culturally mm. and all that kind of things. And mm. here, well, let's have a free-for-all development of the industries and whatever dreams we have. Mm. It, it is a functional thing. Oh, okay. But the uh, people have understood that we will be giving land away to the... Outsiders. Outsiders. Mm. That was the only thing which, which put a stop to the whole thing. Mm, mm, mm. Well, that's interesting. Um, so, I mean, that's the vision or the kind of initiatives that you want to take if you were given the chance to mm. implement policies. As, you know, would I be right <laughs> to say that? Like, yeah. So, and as a retired chief secretary, I mean, literally, you may not have the platform to initiate such discussions for mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But and if you if you are as an MLA also you won't be able to concretize such idea. So the best way is to look at the national level. So coming back to now, you know, with all the visions and policies that you have in your mind, um, do you still look forward to entering into politics? Well, I've learned one lesson. Okay. As I was telling you, mm. man proposes, God disposes. Mm, true. So if it is not in my uh, faith, my God's plan for me to be in politics, well, it, it won't happen. But yes, in order to implement whatever are our dreams and if it's possible, mm. it'll be good to be in politics. Mm, mm. And then, you know, especially in this, at the central level, mm. and provided we have a, we have a like-minded party, Mm. at the center and begin to implement these things, I think mm. it, it should work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is possible. Okay. May I ask you, you, there was a rumor in 2014 or mm. some sort of an under, you know, news that you were planning to contest for Lok Sabha MB seat from NPF in 2014. I don't think so. There was a news like that was floating. And now NPF, we were, we were like, Water and oil. Okay. I don't gel with the NPF party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from whichever party. But yeah. were you intending for contesting in no. 2014? At that time, no. Okay. No, no. Because from some sources, what I heard was mm -hmm. um, your name was kind of projected and taught by many people. But it was our CM who rather took that position and he went for MB Lok Sapa. I could be wrong, but those were the kind of news that I heard during those days? Uh, no. Okay. Because, you see, I retired in 2014 January. Okay. And the CM had already made a decision in 2013 to go as uh, MP. Mm -hmm. So there was no, no, no question of taking over that kind of a seat and all that kind of mm. things. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't think okay. there was any okay. such thing. Okay. Of course, now, of late, uh, there has been a lot of uh, things from the various sources of the people right. hinting, asking whether yes. we'll go for elections and all that kind of thing. But yeah. uh, those are talks are coming on only now. Mm -hmm. But then you contested in 2018 from yes. Mongolia, yeah. presidency. Yeah. And uh, Ngangshi uh -huh. defeated you, I think, in a margin of about 1,000 or something votes. No, it was about 300 something. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But that's a very small margin. Right. That's just a luck. Matter of luck. Uh -huh. And what stopped you from contesting this time again? Last time, I made a big mistake. Mm. You know, you have expectations beyond your capabilities and all that. So I entered actually in two constituencies. Okay. I think maybe I'm the only uh, fellow who have tried. I entered both in Munguya and Agar Yongpang. Okay. That was a mistake. I thought the, uh, the Munguya would be a walkover and uh, mm -hmm. Agar Yongpang also would be okay. Now, this time, uh, by this time, we had created the NDPB party. Right. NDPB party, actually, it is, I mean, the, our creation. And uh, we have made Ching Wang as the, 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 the president. Mm. But Mr. Rio had been undecided whether he'll be with NDPB or with the NP NPF. Okay. Two, three times he said goodbye to us and was joining mm. the NPF. He called us together and said bye, and he was joining. And he even wrote a very nice <laughs> goodbye letter. Okay. I mean, those copies are still around. In the January 2nd, January 2nd of uh, 2018, just a few months sure. before the election, mm -hmm. saying that goodbye to NDPP, fledgling party, mm -hmm. he wishes us well. So after he wrote a letter, 
uh, we had no choice but uh, you know to get somebody to lead the party and therefore uh, I was you know it was a, a kind of a choice for me to lead the okay. party okay but then again after one week he came back and uh, had a negotiation I don't know he went and had a negotiation with the BGP party and all that kind of thing so he came back so what I'm saying is the NDPP party was actually our brainchild okay and we had named it, uh, uh, you know, not that thing, but we had definitely put Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party. Nationalism, you know, Indian nation yeah. and all the kind of things are belonging to the country. Okay. So, as I was saying, uh, we, we were the founder members of NDPP. Okay. Even Mr. Rio going to NPF and coming back and all. In fact, he was wanting to leave the NDPP party last year, uh, January. Yeah, wanting to join NPF and all that kind of thing. The question, issue was raised. Oh, okay. So, uh, we had stuck onto the NDPP party. Then there was a talk about me joining the BJP and then have hobnobbing with them and all kind of things. But, uh, you know, there are certain issues of ideology which people don't seem to understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no intention of me to of joining the BJP party. And then I was photographed with the group, but that was about all. But then there a lot of misunderstanding took place. And then today, Mr. Rio is photographed with uh, Mr. Modi and the BJP and Mohanto and then this <laughs> Sharma mm -hmm. Mohanto. Mm -hmm. That is a different issue. But then when the party ticket was uh, this thing, they had completely sidelined me and it was a kind of a massive insult, no, not that I was counted as an outsider to the party. My brother was there. Mm. He was uh, his uh, RD minister, I think you know yeah, him. Yeah. And my son is also there. And then uh, I applied for. There was no, uh, you know, the I expected at least the working president to be at least mm -hmm. consulted or if at all told why I'm not being given the ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was one chapter. So mm -hmm. when the ticket was denied, I had a choice of either entering any other party. Mm -hmm or to enter as an independent. But I thought uh, overnight changing over your ideologies and other things was not correct. Mm -hmm. But it is that is the wrong in the way in which they treated me and therefore I, I decided not to enter. Mm -hmm. I mean, short and simple. Mm. But as an, as an observer, you are one of the founding members for NDPP. Mm -hmm. And how can a founding member be denied a ticket to contest? <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's how politics work. And I do not know the dynamics within the party. Uh, exactly. That yeah. is it. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the question, you see, PGP and NDPP partner 40-20, whether it is, they're the same party. Mm -hmm. Now accusing me of trying to join the BJP party when I have never applied, no, I've not even applied to join. Okay. The question of me joining the BJP party, and I, nev I never discussed about joining the party. Mm. I had to inquire about what is happening. Mm. Whether it's going to be 60-60 or 40-20 and what is this kind of things. So that kind of uh, uh, inquiry thing, that is a different thing. But then when I'm a founding member of a bar party, to have been treated like that was actually quite a bit of an, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. to be a bit of an insult and therefore... Mm -hmm. uh, I had to resign. Mm. Sadly. They didn't me the ticket, yeah. Yes, sadly. So, yeah. Okay. And you wrote a letter after that saying that, you know, they have disregarded all the efforts that I have put in as a member. Mm -hmm. But what were the basis where they accused you? Like, what did you do so that they got a the chance to accuse you that you were planning to join or merge with BJP? They have not, they, 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 they never... Miss one Mr. Abu Mehta, the Secretary General, one day said that people are saying that you're joining the BJP. That is one only one statement that he made sometime somewhere in 19, uh, 2022. That was, I said, there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, there was no reason given. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it is uh, Mr. Rio's own <laughs> personal <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> perceptions. Okay, but w was it, uh, can we think that it may be because you lost the elec last election that NDPP under, the re under Mr. Rio do not want to take the risk of losing again? Or what was your chance of winning 
this time if you mm. were given the, the tickets? Well, uh, you can feel the, the thing. More or less, mm. the constituency was mine, actually. Mm. You, you can easily make out when the things like you have one village, Mokokjong, you have one village, Longsa, one village, Chichu, three villages, mm -hmm. and then the town sectors. Mm. So it is Mokokjong versus Longsa. Then where Chuchu goes, that will get elected. This time the Chuchu village was with us, with me. Okay. And then the town sector also. So Im Kongmar, he was not even a party worker, party man. He was nothing, nobody. Mm. So CM just picked him up and gave him the ticket. Mm. So the question of me losing actually what didn't arise, but um, ticket was not given and therefore... Uh, okay. Uh, I, I think if I say this, I may end up in you know trouble as well. But I want okay. to ask you, um, some people with whom I have interacted, they had a, they had a thought that um, it is CM do not does not want to give tickets or you know anything as such to a capable person. He wants someone who would say yes to anything that he orders or commands. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that from my word, <laughs> but that's what people told me. What is yeah. your comment? No, people will say it, all that. But, uh, who knows the uh, chief minister's <laughs> mind oh, <laughs> and yeah. the things which happen. But uh, that I'll leave it up to him to mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. not, uh, not mm -hmm. from my side. Mm -hmm. So like I said, uh, as we also discussed before, mm -hmm. I think a people, a person of your caliber um, should not necessarily be just confined to you know, local politics. Are you interested in looking... I mean, looking at the national level as a Lok Sabha MP from Nagaland, if ever given a chance. Actually, who wouldn't if there's a, right. a chance is given? Right. But uh, that is not my basic uh, mm. interest at the moment. Mm -hmm. My interest is to build up certain political aspects and issues for Nagas, that's mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the state level? Yeah, at the state level. Okay. Because we are totally confused. Mm -hmm. We're totally confused. Mm -hmm. no, politics, there's no meaning. Do you feel any direction, economics direction? Do you feel any social direction? Everything is just breaking apart. Eastern Nagaland, Central Nagaland, mm -hmm. even Southern Nagaland. Yeah. And then everything is just, just, just floating. And then the, 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 it is social and political. Mm. And then we have not moved one step forward in the, in the negotiation process for the Naga. The New Delhi is just playing with us. Mm -hmm. Now going to 25 years, we're going to 30 years. By 30 years, 40 years, we will have forgotten all these uh, issues which these people have died mm -hmm. for. Bloodshed, they have, they, they have really worked for the Naga, this thing, name and all that, but the things... Uh, by 30, 40 years, people would have forgot. Even now, people are forgetting it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm saying, politically, no direction. Socially, all fragmented. Eastern Nagaland, Central, everything is getting fragmented. Mm -hmm. Economically, no direction. Mm -hmm. Nobody's got an inkling of, you know what, although all the things that we have given and told them to do, I've made the agriculture the prime thing by starting with the Agri Expo, then the bamboo mission, then yeah. the bioresource mission, all this kind of thing, everything. And this just give it the political the things to head the thing, and then it's all dead, dying. Mm. What more can you say that the, 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 the state is going nowhere? Mm -hmm. So it, it, there's a need to you know, hold the people and the state together first. Mm before thinking up about, because even if you go into this, uh, this uh, parliament and all that kind of things, what will one voice do? Mm. It will be good if we are given a chance and we can, you can make a statement, but what can one voice do? True, true. Well, it's better if uh, we mm. reconstruct our people and places now. Mm. Now that makes sense, mm. because Nagaland just have one member, like you said, mm. and it doesn't really make any effective you know, policy because of that representation. Mm. And we can't influence policy as well. Yeah. So, yeah we don't get <laughs> like time to speak. I feel sorry for that uh, M uh, ML ML uh, MP from uh, Manipur. Okay. Who's 
asked not to speak. Oh yeah, yeah NPF guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, NPF guy asked not <laughs> to speak. Oh my goodness, yeah, how 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 you can do that? No? Right, right. He should have been the one speaking, he being from have, Manipur he state. He should have said whether you advise or not, I will speak. Mm, mm. It's his Manipur, he's been elected from there. Right. He's a rep- representative of Manipur, and when Manipur is being discussed, mm-hmm. how? I mean, so that one member being elected, <laughs> you know, yeah. you listen to others, doesn't make much difference. Okay, I mean, okay. Again, this thing. Okay. But now uh, you have, like, the ex-CM of Naglin, Dr. S.C. Jamir. Yes. He was a Congress veteran politician. Mm-hmm. Um, did you... Did it ever click your mind of joining Congress as your platform to take off as a launching pad for your political career? Because Congress mm. is also quietly weakened, mm-hmm. but if a person like you approaches approach the party, you know, so that you can work together, definitely, I'm sure they will welcome. Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned to you that uh, I had in- we had insisted that we shall put Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party. Yeah. Because uh, at that time. Uh, the uh, question of you know going with the Congress or the BGP and all the, actually the situation was not very conducive. Mm-hmm. But our inclination was that if there has to be a political uh, platform in Nagaland, there has to be aligned with the center. That is one. So that's why we put a nationalist. So that will show the indi- in inclination of our thinking process. Mm-hmm. We had to be linked up with some party I mean, in the center. Then, uh, when we think about my political uh, what background, you see, my father was a congressman from 1982 to, to 1996, by the time oh, he died. Okay, okay. He was a minister all throughout. Mm. From 1992, 1993, S.C. Jamir asked me to help him and therefore I was his principal secretary up to 2003 when he lost the oh, thing. Right. So for 10 years I was, uh, so I picked up a little bit of politics here and there and kind of things, but our inclination was actually towards the Congress party. Mm-hmm. And uh, ideologically also we are more inclined to be, you know, with the, with the secular mm and all this free uh, democracy rather than the, the conception of the BJP and the Mr. Modi's mm. India. So, yeah, the inclination has always been there for the Congress mm. from uh, my, my personal... Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's what strikes struck my mind, you know, mm-hmm. like since you know, as contesting as an independent will be quite challenging for you. Mm-hmm. And Congress can project you as their candidate, either for MLA or either for MB. <laughs> I, th- I, I think people would love to see you contesting for Lok Sabha, as far as I understand you know, what people are talking about on social media. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people, they right. talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, I mean, getting back to your now personal life, um, how do you spend your days nowadays? Well, I have my computer. I right. try to type out my few things mm. of books, as I was mm. mentioning, and mm. while, while writing a, a mm. book and that thing. Mm. Then uh, I believe in God, and therefore I spend a lot of time, mm. you know, mm. uh, surfing about religion and then my beliefs. Mm. And I'm particularly concerned about this climate change, artificial intelligence, and the world war. Three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nagas are not at all prepared for any of this. Huge global issues arising, looming before us. We just keep pay lip service, but we have done nothing. Mm. Climate change, we are doing nothing to prepare ourselves, even if a matter of food survival and all that. Artificial intelligence, we know it is happening, but... Luckily, few schools have started robotics, and then I, I hope they'll go on with that thing. But then we'll be just left like animals, you know, in the world where artificial intelligence and everything else move. Then World War Three suddenly World War Three starts, and we have the global winter and all the kind of things for three, four years. The covered, mm. how do we intend to survive? The people are not even thinking. Mm. So these are some issues which I'm trying to let. I mean, okay. Let people think and uh, you know act. 
I think that's a great cause. Um, mm-hmm. And now when I look at your family, I mean, in Nagalan, at least in Nagalan context, your family is considered very influential in the sense that your father was a you know, minister and after that you become chief secretary. And, I, and currently your brother is a minister. minister mm-hmm. and, and even your wife, madam, is like, was the chief secretary. How, what do you attribute this, let's say, blessings to and how this came about? And this kind of cult, this kind of family background is very very rare. I would only attribute it to God. Mm-hmm. My f- parents, father and mother. Yes, in the village we have come from a long lineage of you know people who have been contributing to the village leadership. All those things, but that was confined to the village. Mm-hmm. When my father came into the the bigger society, and then served as a garment servant. He was always careful and caring for the, 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 the downtrodden, especially mm. the Eastern Nagaland people. They still mm. remember him because he cared for them. And then they cared. But all this was uh, related to religion. I mm. mean, religion means faith and belief yeah. in God. And I think that is a blessing which we are enjoying till mm. today. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that's a legit, <laughs> legit evidence. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Now, as a as an as an ex-bureaucrat and as a someone who has, you know, tried to enter into politics, you can't go back to bureaucracy anymore. But you mm. still have a chance to be in the field of politics. And what is your next move? Mm. What do you look forward to? <laughs> <laughs> to be tell you very frankly. Yeah. Okay. First, I we have to oppose. Uh, the forces which are dominating the Indian politics, mm. like Mr. Modi's mm, mm. conceptions of uh, political growth of Na- India, it's totally unacceptable. Mm, mm. Hindutva, that, is, that will not make India run. And if we care about the whole political system, we have to stand up against mm. that, uh, uh, that uh, thing. That is the first impending things which is coming forward. Then mm-hmm. the next one to, as I told you, we have to think about the state devolution. And so as long as God keeps us alive and healthy, yeah. we have to start uh, thinking in terms of, you know, how to put more inputs into the thinking process. Mm-hmm. The thinking process. Mm-hmm. And then that's, that would be the basic move. Mm-hmm. I mean, now you are very serious and adamant about the BJP's ideology mm-hmm. under Modi's leadership. Mm-hmm. And that makes me wonder, how come you were accused as of joining BJP? Because by the, by the way you express yourself mm-hmm. on your, of your stance on your, of, about your ideology, political ideology, I think you were very adamant and against about the BJP ideology. Mm-hmm. And that, that makes me wonder, how come like, NDBB accused you of trying to join BJP and, you know, um, not giving the ticket. Yeah, politics. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a little confusing and all that. Right. But, uh, you know, when you're in politics, you have to speak about certain things mm-hmm. against, for. Mm-hmm. And uh, if the BJP, we were talking to them about how, uh, you know, uh, let me just say, corrupt the systems are mm-hmm. and how they can be corrected. Mm-hmm. Maybe those things were taken as, uh, you know, you know, in politics there are certain things that you have to tell the, 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 the people about what is what, no? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And are you concerned as a religious person as well? Mm-hmm. Someone who loves God and someone who wants to deep dive into, you know, the principles and values of faith. Are you concerned that Nagaland is under the rule of a PGP alliance? Yeah, mm. I found out that that, that that's a mistake, mm. which we have done in the last term and we had to go along with that. Mm. Maybe God didn't <laughs> want me to be elected and therefore I was kept out. <laughs> but they've been going on. Mm-hmm. And I think Nagas should make up our own minds about where we... Mm. Every Naga feels this way. Mm. They don't like Hindutva. Ask any... <laughs> But then the Hindutva is the basic policy, uh, basic uh, the, the the policy of uh, BJP, and uh, we are just following mindlessly. Mm, mm, mm. That's quite um, disappointing. In fact, 
you know mm. for us politics is just like it doesn't matter whichever government is in mm-hmm. ruling i want to be there but we don't really value the the values and the ideology that yeah. we yeah <laughs> so and as someone who is uh in in the christian you know someone from the judeo christian values like mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. it must be it's it's kind of concerning and um, what do you what do you say on that like how long will the, this how long can this go on mm. <laughs> You're asking very personal questions. Yeah. You see, <coughs> how long will this go on? Yeah. Or how far does God love the Nagas? Mm. God loves us, but He puts us in certain situations. And uh, I sometimes feel that uh, you know, we have claimed the Nagaland for Christ. Mm-hmm. Very, it's a huge declaration mm. before the world. Yeah. Will Satan? Quietly, just observe it and let it by. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And therefore, he has started acting. So you look at the economy. We have no economy as compared to Mizoram or Arunachal. No economy is evolving in Nagaland. Society, one step front and then fracturing. Mm -hmm. Politics, whether overground politics or underground politics, is meaningless. Underground to one step front and then the two factions, three factions, mm. now nine, ten, twelve factions. It's it just breaking up. Mm. And overground politics, you know, the, the partyless government. I mean, some unimaginable things are happening. Mm-hmm. All pointing as if, you know, there's, a, there's a, some power or force is ensuring that everything about the Nagas is, 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 is def- it's, you know, destabilized. Destroy it. And then we have uh, drugs. We have the huge problems of drugs. Mm. We have in this LGBTQ, <laughs> yeah. a frightening thing. Right. And the Nagas are just taking it quietly without. Mm. So all these things are happening. And we believe in God, and therefore, whether it is um, we have called on God, Nagaland for Christ, and whether it you was. Know, Mm-hmm. Satan is acting. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are you know some conjectures and beliefs which mm-hmm. we think is uh, you know, guiding mm-hmm. our people. Mm-hmm. So, how far we will stay with the BGP and all that kind of things? <laughs> that is, yeah, only only time will tell. Yeah, us. only time will tell, and <laughs> oh, and God will release us mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. So, thank you so much, sir, for you know sharing your thoughts and views. Mm-hmm. I'm sure people would love to. Um, just join us for this and, and listen to what you're thinking because as someone who is an intellectual from the state I think we lack a platform where we can communicate with people mm-hmm. so I'm sure people would love to hear your views and let's <laughs> see how people respond <laughs> yeah I mean the many, many may not like what yeah. you're saying but thank you very yeah, much for you, sir. bringing me on your show <laughs> and, uh, well, I wish you all the luck thank you so much sir. I hope you can go from strength to strength mm-hmm. yeah. thank you so that's that's a lot okay, to me yeah. thank you so much mm-hmm.